as we begin our worship, we say and sign, in the name of the loving Father, in the name of the risen Son, in the name of the life-giving Spirit, in the name of the three in one. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Good morning, everyone. So we're here again for another assembly. This week, I'm going to begin by asking you some questions. I want you to imagine how the world would be if we were all the same. Would this be fun or would this be boring? If we were all the same, how would we learn new things from each other? In the world that we live in, do you think that we celebrate difference or do you think that we judge difference? That we're not very respectful of things that are different to us or our own understanding of things? What do you think? Shall we see what's in the suitcase? Ooh. Now a very important word here that perhaps links a lot of those questions that I just asked. Can anybody tell me what that is? I hope that comes up the right way round. It says respect respect how important is it that we respect one another got a story in this story every time you hear the word respect i want you to put your thumbs up like this and i want you to bow down as if they're people respect and bow down to one another are you ready there was a lot of noise in the temple courtyard. The two priests, they looked down their noses in disapproval. My word, this is noisy, said Ebenezer pompously. Absolutely, my dear chap, replied his friend Silas. People today just don't show any respect. When I was young, we would show respect respect for everyone older. No one seems to respect anyone else at all. The two priests, they looked down their noses at the crowd in front of them. Oh, Ebenezer snorted. It's all the fault of that young whippersnapper from Galilee. What's his name? Jesus. He's a troublemaker. He doesn't respect any of us. Do you know what he did yesterday? He stormed into the courtyard right here and tipped up all the tables of the pigeon sellers and shouted that no one was showing any respect for the house of God. He called us a den of thieves. Dreadful behaviour, agreed Silas. No respect. And look, there he is now, with all those horrible sick people all around him. And look at all those revolting children. Ugh! Children! <sighs> Has Jesus no respect? encouraging children to come into the house of God. Ebenezer gasped and pointed across the courtyard. Who is that rude man dancing around and waving his arms and legs in the air? Oi you! Show some respect. This is the house of God. But the dancing man shouted back Jesus has made me better I can walk look I can dance too thank you Jesus and he jigged away happily 
Then a little girl shouted, I can see! Jesus has made me see again! But the two priests, they were horrified. But not as horrified as when a whole gang of children suddenly jumped up and started yelling at the top of their voices, Praise to the Son of David! Yo, Jesus! Wow, Jesus, you're great. Respect. This was all too much for the priests. They strode across the courtyard and shouted at the children. Will you be quiet? This is God's house, not a playground. Show some respect. The children were frightened by the two important men getting angry with them. They looked at Jesus with big, worried eyes. Would Jesus be cross too? But Jesus stood up and smiled. Jesus smiled at the children and thought what they were saying was just brilliant. Jesus then turned to the two priests and he looked very sad. Silas shouted at him rudely. Do you hear what these revolting children are saying? Jesus' face broke out into the biggest smile ever. Oh, I can hear them, he said. Haven't you read your scriptures? We're priests, said Ebenezer. We know our scriptures from back to front, thank you very much. The two priests looked down their nose at Jesus. Jesus nodded. Hmm, well then, can't you remember that bit in the Psalms where David says, Oh God, you taught children and babies to sing praises. These children, they are doing what they should be doing, showing God's son some respect. You call that respect? shouted Ebenezer. His face was going purple with rage. I certainly do, said Jesus quietly. That's real respect, not just pretending. Silas and Ebenezer frowned. How dare Jesus speak to them like that? We'll have to get rid of this Jesus, muttered Silas. Yes, indeed, agreed Ebenezer. He has no idea who needs to be respected around here. Wow. Wasn't it an eventful day in the temple courtyard that day? A story about respect. But in our story, who didn't show any respect? Who did show respect? And how did they do it? Oh my goodness, wasn't those priests Ebenezer and Silas grumpy? Am I grumpy like Ebenezer and Silas? <laughs> I hope not. They were really judgmental, weren't they? They were judgmental of everyone. They had no respect for any of the other people in the story. They didn't have any respect for the way that they wanted to praise and worship and just to be who they were. They thought that everyone must believe as they believe and that everyone must act as they act. Sadly, it's like this in the world sometimes as well. Our differences are often a means to create distance between us. But this isn't how God intended it to be. God intends for us all to come together. 
to respect one another. God didn't make us different so that we would all be the same. God created us to be a diverse, diverse in race, in ability and in experience. So not to respect difference and diversity doesn't reflect the love that we should have for one another and for God. We should respect and celebrate the differences that we have because of their beauty, because of their usefulness and because through all these things we are being faithful to all that God has created us to be. In respecting our difference, we are equal in learning from one another and being excited about the differences that we all hold. In the Bible, St Paul describes this respect for diversity as an image of Jesus' body. He writes, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles or slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. What Paul is explaining here is that as each individual cell of the body contributes to the whole body, each person must play their part to ensure that the community that we belong to, our families, our schools, our churches, our mosques, our other places of worship, our local neighbourhoods and so on, that we can be part of these and celebrate them in respect for one another. And being respectful and valuing difference is how we live out that image of the body, that image of Christ and community. I wonder how we can show respect for each other today and this week. I wonder how we can value and celebrate all our differences. We're now going to um, come to the song that we've been learning, Walk With You. I'm going to quickly go through the um, actions, the sign language to them. Hopefully you'll remember some, them, some of them, so let's see how we go anyway. So, you made a perfect world in love. You made a special place for us where we can live together, God and us live together. God up there, but we turned and walked away from the perfect plan you've made for us to walk with you forever. And there was nothing we could do to make our own way back to you. Even though we let you down, you came and found us with a chance to turn our lives around. You stepped into the world that you have made. You lift us to our feet and lead the way. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Jesus, we can walk with you again. And I'm going to teach you the, the next part, the little like, bridge part of this. And it goes like this. Here I stand amazed, humbled by your grace. Help, let's help me God to walk with you again. Here I stand amazed, humbled by your grace. Help me God to walk with you again. Shall we see how we go? Mm. special place for us a place where we could live together but we turned and walked away from the perfect plan you made for us to walk with you forever and there was 
was nothing we could do to make our own way back to you. Even though we let you down, you came and found us with a chance to turn our lives around. Stepped into the world that you had made. You lift us to our feet and lead the way. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Through Jesus we can walk with you again. You made a perfect world in love. A special place for us, a place where we could live together. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for giving us the patience and understanding to reach out to others and to treat each other with dignity and respect. Help us to remember that everyone is equal, to value other people, to celebrate our diversities and to treat them well, just as we wish to be treated. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 
See you next week. Bye.